face, Brad. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm no TV celebrity. I've got the perfect face for radio. <laughs> okay. So don't come here today with any high hopes of being TV entertained or that sort of stuff. And I hope you're not squawmish. And I hope you haven't got a thin skin. Okay? If you listen to ABC Radio, you can't have a thin skin, can you? Because people send me nasty letters to the ABC sometimes. Sad. Well, I've travelled four hours to tell a hundred people how to pee in a bottle. Is that what I've come here for? <laughs> and by the looks of your faces, you don't use it too much. <laughs> So I'll just start off where we all make the same mistake. If you've got a problem with gardening, the first mistake you all make is you try to turn it into a science. And you know what science is? The study of dead things. You're not going to have much of a bloody garden if you're going to turn it into a science, eh? So get rid of the science out of the gardening. If you have an insect problem, if you have a fungus problem, it doesn't matter what problem you have in the garden, it is the soil is crook. All right? The soil is crook. No matter how much pee you put on it or how much chemical you want to spray on it, it isn't going to solve your problem. If you have insects attacking your garden and targeting a particular plant, for goodness sake, check the soil. Now, we've been doing the ABC for 25 years as live talk back, but 10 years probably just as a general discussion. And we've been telling people for 30 odd years, before the greenies become fashionable, that you had to put surface mulch on the gardens. And we, give you, we gave you all the airy-fairy information is that it made the garden look good and it saved you doing weeding. When really what it was about was putting humus in the soil. It is humus in the soil that makes plants drought tolerant, that makes their tissue hard, and that gives them a regular food supply. And any soil without humus, where you've got to keep applying fertiliser to make it look good, and your lawn would be the classic case of that, then you know your soil doesn't have humus. And the only way you're going to get it into the soil is with decomposing organic matter. Farmers will tell you they want to clear that thousand acres of scrub up there because that's virgin soil. And after five years it's no good because he's got to buy fertiliser to put on it. But why was it good in the first place? Because it was full of humus. It was full of the plant food from all of the decomposing leaf litter that got put on it for a thousand years. So you have to do that to your home garden. But you create problems when you do it. It looks good, it stops your weeding, but you have trouble with plants growing. Now the best way to put humus into the soil is to have a compost heap. You's all got a compost heap? You's all compost? So you don't have a TV. Oh, a different light on the bloody subject, isn't it? To make compost, you need three bins side by side. You fill one over a month or two month period with fresh organic matter. You put a handful of blood and bone on every layer you put in there. Then you pick up a garden pour for a shovel. Our deers have that. They don't have black snakes for handles in Bundaberg, obviously. Not many people want to pick up a shovel on a fork, do they? I got three sons and three daughters. They are fitness freaks. They will pound 20 mile up a bloody bitumen road and joggers and sweat and, and come back all red and the old man's in the garden raking up a few leaves. And the boy will come into the gate, he said, Jesus, it's tough today, Dad. Long run. I said, mate, grab that bloody fork and turn that compost bin over into that one, will you? Oh, Jesus, Dad, I'm buggered. I couldn't do that now, he said. <laughs> <laughs> and turning over that compost heap into that bin, would have done him more good than jogging 20 mile up that bloody road, stressing his body and his heart, 
and it'll use more muscles, more nerves, turning that bit of compost into a bit. But they won't do it. They're old man square. <laughs> to most people, you are too busy to do it because you know how long it takes to convert that to the third bin? It takes 14 weeks. When you get to here, you go back. And it's 14 weeks. Who's going to do it? Can I describe you getting out of bed Saturday morning? You, this is me. I bounce out of bed, grab my sand shoes, make a cup of coffee, light a smoke, go and, go and sit amongst the cabbages, and I study the sex lives of insects. <laughs> do you do that? No. Do you know how to control the insects in your garden? No. Do you know how they have sex? No. This is you Saturday morning getting out of bed. You roll out of bed, you rub your eyes and you think, oh Christ, I've got to do the garden this morning. You don't even make a cup of coffee. You walk to the back door, put your flip flops on. Then you'll pick up two bricks and you'll walk up into the veggie patch or out into the garden to see what you can kill. Don't you? Does that describe you in a garden? You go out there to see what you can kill. Isn't that strange? Everywhere else I've been, all the people have a thing about insects in the garden. They all have a thing about insects in the garden. And I'll quote you a simple one, a very simple one. You all have a citrus tree in your garden? Get caterpillars on it? You touch it, sticks out two red feelers, smells. You flick it off, you grind it into that dirt, you've got a big smile on your face. Oh, I've got him, look at that. If that idiot on the ABC asked you to go out to the yard with a tennis racket and kill every butterfly in your garden, what would you think? Fruit leaf, would you? And that caterpillar on that citrus tree is a baby butterfly. You caused an abortion. Why? Why did you do that? How many leaves of that bloody citrus tree were you going to eat? How many were you going to eat? So why did we have to kill it? Does it give you a thrill or, or something? You got something out of it, didn't you? To most people, that's a chore in gardening. 99% of insects in the garden are your friend. 99% are your friend. If you mulch, you are going to get lots and lots of different insects and you need every one of them. 